Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Golden Ratio Podcast. I am Jen, GR Mom, joined as always by GR Dad. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, GR Dad. How's it going? I think I was waiting for something different, but it never came. <laughs> I mean, it, the podcast starts pretty much the same way every time. <laughs> that way. I was lost in thought? I don't know. <laughs> I'm doing all right. Okay, good. All if right. that was your question. That that was the question. One of the questions. Um, yeah. Last podcast of 2020. Amazing. We did it. We did. We made it. Frick. Uh, the cocktail of the week is the Stairway to Heaven. You want to give that a taste to your dad? And she's buying a stairway to heaven. <laughs> Maybe you have a future as a recording artist. I think I just confirmed that I do not. Oh, that's delicious. Yeah. Really good. Much yeah. better than my singing. <laughs> wow. So this cocktail, the Stairway to Heaven, we have had before Yeah. at Jade Mountain. Yes. So Jade, On the roof. Jade Mountain is this resort in St. Lucia. It's like... You know in Ghostbusters where they're like talking about the building that Sigourney Weaver lives in and they're talking about the guy who designed it and how <laughs> like his plan, like he's designing for the paranormal. Yeah. And it's, it's all crazy. He's like building it for the end times or something. It seems like the guy who built the resort at Jade Mountain is a paranormal architect. I, it felt to me like being on kind of a Mars base. It was... Very strange, uh, insanely beautiful and luxurious. Like you have these rooms. Okay, so the rooms only have three walls. Let's start with that. Yes. The fourth wall. There's no fourth wall. It just looks out over. Yeah. No this... screen. No window. No. no porch. Just missing wall. But there, there is an infinity pool in yeah, every that's room. Cool. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah. And then it looks out like onto the twin peaks or the two peaks of saint lucia that's like those are the peaks that are on their flag and the ocean it's so cool it's beautiful and it's like way up high and you have to walk across like a little gangway like suspended in the air to get to your room each room has its own little oh, gangway yeah, that was awesome you get a butler which you do you you meet me your butler on the first day we're, we're very uncomfortable with service personnel yeah uh but British, you know, a lot of the world, it works real it, well, it, right? Yeah. Um, it it was crazy. The I mean, the architecture of the place. Like, if you look up Jade Mountain, St. Lucia, you'll be able to see pictures oh, of the it stuff. Was, and It was really once in a lifetime, yeah. And they have, like, the it's some Russian guy who I think owns the resort. And there's two resorts. There's one that's, like, a little more normal. And then there's Jade Mountain, which we stayed at, which is crazy. The architecture was crazy. There were no internal doors. Right, it just had like the big door at the beginning the, the, to walk the, into the room, the room, yeah. right, and then it it kind of felt like an apartment, but there's no doors; it's just levels and walls. Yeah, the bathroom is like the upper level, and by the way, the the weirdest and worst part of it is that so there's a bathroom at the upper level. It doesn't have any walls around it, so there's like a sink and there's a hot tub, but also the toilet. But it's just kind of like in the room, no doors. So we had to like establish this protocol. Of like, okay, I'm, go I'm peeing. Yeah, I will now soon be peeing. Now I am done peeing. You, you, don't don't turn around. Leave me back here. Yeah. Yeah, it was very strange. But uh, the infinity pool was cool. I mean, you went out in the porch, and if you went, take took two steps to the left, you'd be in the pool. And the pool goes all the way up to the edge of the room. Yeah, and you could you could swim. And it was a heat. I think it was either heated or it was just warm enough. It's just warm every day there. It's but right I did on enjoy the equator. drinking beer in the pool. That was cool. Yeah, and we so you oh. can like fill out this little thing and you know for like what kind of foods do you want, and the butler would like deliver the foods to your room, and so they had like this local Saint Lucia beer that Jared Dad would drink in the Piton, pool. Piton, I think it was called. That's yeah. right. Yeah, and for breakfast they had this bread, so it's like a yeast bread, rolled up in it, so it's it's got this like coconut vanilla filling, like so it's like coconut with like vanilla beans and like this syrup so it's really sweet and it's rolled into like a roll with this yeast it bread. was really good oh my god i even when i got home i was like i need the recipe for that bread you guys can you send it to me and they did they sent it to me yeah that was it, it was what's, so that, what's that pretzel what's that annie's place called in malls 
Yeah, and he's pretzels. And he's pretzels. It's like a good version of something they would try to make. Like you are insulting and this I am, delicious food. I am, I am. I think they just make pretzels. Didn't we also see pretzels. a chocolate factory? So, yeah, they own a chocolate, a cocoa plantation. Like, like we toured their little plantation where they grow all sorts of stuff, but like cocoa beans and they showed like the cocoa nibs drying and they make their own chocolate and you can only get it at if you stay at the resort and it's a uh, amazing it's amazing yeah they have like a 60 percent cocoa with little nibs in it. it is the best i have spent every day of my life since then trying to find something that's that good and i have not there that are really good chocolate bars with cocoa nibs in them but nothing are like that it, it was, was just so it was just a really it's a cool little island with like two volcanic peaks on it um but the resort is one cooler because it was so once in a lifetime yeah the whole thing i mean i felt a little isolated by the end because mm -hmm. like we weren't i don't know go like there's not a lot of places to go yeah the, like we you, did some tours. at the resort that's it like you can't yeah. there's no town i mean we didn't weren't going to go to like you know the lunch place in town because it was like an hour tri trip oh my god pain yeah. you like get so they pick you up at the airport and they drive you up this treacherous unmaintained road in, Na narrow enough for one car mostly and like there's it just chunks of former pavement it's not really paved and <laughs> and it's like a 45 <laughs> degree up oh yeah it's crazy so yeah you can't really leave you can't walk <laughs> down the hill <laughs> uh anyway this is a drink that they have there um it's called the stairway to heaven and so it's made with this liqueur called seventh heaven which you can only get in saint lucia and it's a ginger liqueur with bois bande, which is a aphrodisiac bark of a tree. It, you bewitched me. You're bewitching me with this drink. The thing is, we don't have any of the Seventh Heaven liqueur because you oh. can only get it in St. Lucia. And I tried very hard to find, like at the airport, could I buy it? Could I yeah. get it? I couldn't find it anywhere. I haven't been able to import it. If anyone it's magic. finds a way to get some Seventh Heaven liqueur in the u.s let me know i'll pay a bunch of money to get some uh but you can just use ginger liqueur liqueur which you know not as aphrodisical yeah it's it actually says like uh they have a recipe on their website and it says you know if you don't have seventh heaven liqueur which of course nobody does if they don't live in saint lucia um you can use any other sweet ginger liqueur and replace bois bande with your own touch of romance oh that's what it says that's a nice way of putting it yeah so we we use uh i'm gonna mispronounce it but domini de canton canton the french ginger liqueur mm. in kind of the cool looking bottle that you can get at any liquor store that doesn't fit in any of our cabinets because it's like one and a half times as tall as a regular <laughs> bottle that's the saint germain oh there we go this one actually does fit on the bottom shelf uh with the taller bottles yeah the helicopter hand that's bad audio it's okay. the airlift from our hospital to key west to miami to miami um so anyway this is an ounce and a half of we would use ginger liqueur an ounce of dark rum we use goslings um an ounce of orange juice and half an ounce of coconut cream it's real good it's kind of zippy it's real good it has has some it's it's kind of a complex flavor yeah it's good yeah it's very delish mm -hmm. um so i haven't made this for a long time i think i tried once and it was really bad but it's good. That's not how I remember it. But I'll also add. I'll take your word for it. Uh, I got this new book today called Tiki Modern Tropical Cocktails by Shannon Mustafer. M U S T I P H E R. Mustafer. Uh, which is a beautiful cocktail book with all the kinds of cocktails that we make. I'm going to make a bunch of stuff out of this book. It's really nice. And it's one of like the first major cocktail books written by a black woman which like who knows why that hasn't happened um because we I have some, some ideas well fair totally fair uh but there's a lot of great black women cocktail or oh yeah yeah no absolutely i could just see why that you know yes. they're all catching up now so the book is beautiful the photography is beautiful and the recipes are really good um like i've spent a bunch of today reading it so i'm gonna have to get some stuff to make some of these but it's not like the book the zero book that you got me the alinea dry cocktail book where you have to like sous vide bubble gum for 14 hours oh that had to, that required you to change your entire life yeah i would have had to buy a lot of equipment become a maker of you know alcohol-free spirits <laughs> yeah this is much more 
doable. Uh, yeah, but it has good history, has some explanation, and has some like basic bar tips and stuff. It's really, yeah. it seems really well thought out. It's it's a great book. So if you're interested in making kind of tropical cocktails and not like super sweet blended whatever, but right. like real tiki cocktails, like a lot of the ones we've made, painkillers on there. Um, I mean, that's a, a classic tiki cocktail, but uh, yeah, that's a, a great book. So recommend. Wood second. Okay. As a recipient, not a user. Indeed. I'm taking another drink. Here. There we go. No, do it up. Mm-hmm. All right. You better wet your whistle to get updates. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's been a week, Inko. It's been a, a week of Sundays or whatever a long week feels like. For a short week, it's been a long week. So let's start with the little cheese. Little cheese. So we're recording on Wednesday night. Little cheese had his surgery on Monday. Uh, went well. I tweeted a link to pictures of the tumor they took out, which was like about the size of a soccer ball. With a trigger warning, because it's... I didn't want to link it. Cause it's, some... it's like real t- real life surgery photo. Yeah. So they took out his spleen, and then they took out this tumor that was like the size of a soccer ball, and then there is also like a bunch of fat around the tumor, which is super interesting. So she says, she's like, so this tumor has bled before, which is the thing that happens with these tumors. Um, and and then it stopped, like the body stopped the bleeding, and then apparently the body starts putting a bunch of fat around the tumor to help stop the bleeding. Like you grow a bunch of fat around a tumor if it huh. bleeds. So that's, you can see, if you look at those pictures, you can see in them that there's a ton of fat that also came out because that fat was attached to the tumor and it was part of like... Like it encases the loose blood, dried blood kind of It encases stuff? like the spot that was bleeding, basically. Wow. Yeah. Body's pretty cool. So, uh, anyway, he's like five pounds lighter now. <laughs> like, and his tummy looks less distended. It's true. Uh, yes. No, he definitely looks, even with kind of the swelling and everything, he looks skinnier. I if, think it's funny that you also had him fixed at the same time. <laughs> While he's under. May as well take those out. Yeah. I mean, the, the worry is that even though he's old, if there's a dog in heat in the neighborhood that he'll try to run, not that he can go far, but we don't want to worry He would about go it. crazy. I mean, male dogs go, they just don't have any regard for their own safety. Yeah. So may as well. Yeah. I mean, if yeah, he's we don't anyway. want him roaming or swimming across the bay or something because someone's in heat. Yeah. Do you think St. Patrick needs to go out? All right. We'll check. Okay. All right. Did St. Patrick need to go out? Uh, yeah, but he's very good about always having needed to go on out. If you let him out, he'll be like, oh, it's not fine. I'm, I find myself outside. This is awesome. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, all right, so Little Cheese, uh, now tumorless, um, still has cancer, though. He does have, she had kind of seen on the ultrasound and then confirmed in the surgery that he's got some lesions slash little tumors on his liver. So, you know, this didn't cure him. But hopefully for whatever time he has left he's going to be more comfortable not having that soccer ball pushing his organs around and yeah hanging on him so should be nice he's a little banged up right now but he's f- slowly it's been two days what yeah he's slowly getting back to sort of where he was yeah so we picked him up at the end of the day monday uh he did eat on tuesday but he didn't drink anything though he was super hydrated from all the fluids yeah he peed a lot yesterday even though he didn't drink and i was trying to get him to drink what i kept sticking a bowl in his face be like hey he you he, just, he squirted in his mouth with a syringe <laughs> he's very worried but then he this morning like he drank fine yeah so uh yeah so his appetite's still not great but he's drinking and you know he's resting a lot he's doing fine so mm-hmm. he's got that big pink bear belly he's got that cute little <laughs> thumb now cute pink thumb so he's doing okay yeah uh and you know the hope is that you know, once he's had a week and he's recovered and, you know, he gets his staples out next Friday, at like 13 days, I think, um, that he'll feel a lot better. You know, he'll have a lot of healing time by then. Yeah. So, uh, Patrick's having a real hard time drinking. <laughs> no. Over there, he's like angling himself weird. Oh, that guy, man, he just keeps on trucking. He just keeps on trucking. I, we were just talking about how Patrick isn't that much weirder than when he got here because he was already pretty weird and shaky um but he's definitely in his own little world yeah but seems happy he enjoys the pets yeah yeah um all right so saint um boots no cheap roadie parmesan (laughs) 
There we are. <laughs> Just got to go through them all sometimes. <laughs> Parmesan had his surgery on Monday. We will come back to Monday. Oof. But let us go back to Christmas, where medicine that we were supposed to receive from Chewy on Christmas Eve did not arrive. Two seizure, anti-seizure medicines for food. You ordered it almost a week before. I ordered it on December 16th. More than a week. Yeah. And it was supposed to have arrived, and it did not arrive on December 24th. And so on December 25th, we were out of both medicines. So that's As not... As you'll recall, gosh. it's anti-seizure medicine for... Anti-seizure medicines. Voodoo. And you can't just stop those. All of them need to be tapered. No. So I was like, what the hell are we going to do? Our vet no longer is doing emergency hours, uh, which is its own scary thing. But yeah, it's an animal hospital that closed at 7 at night. Yeah, it was the only... 24-hour emergency clinic in the Keys. So for the time being, if we want to go to an emergency clinic, we have to go to Miami, which is like a two and a half, three-hour And drive. everything bad happens at night for dogs. Yeah. Or on Sundays. Uh, rumors are that there will be a new emergency clinic opening next year. So fingers crossed for that. Fingers crossed. Um, but yeah, so we can't, we don't have a vet that we can talk to. The vet's closed. Okay, so... What am I going to do? So one of these is a dog-specific medicine, and then one of them is a general anti-seizure medicine. So I texted our Maryland vet, because I have a cell phone number, and I was like, hey, Dr. Bob, I need a favor. Merry Christmas. Uh, can you please call in a prescription to the one pharmacy that's open on today, Christmas, Christmas Day. Day? Yeah, Christmas Day for my dog. Here's what he's taking. And Dr. Bob's like, sure, of course. Great. So he calls Walgreens, which I have checked. It's open on Christmas. Their pharmacy is open on Christmas. So he calls and he gets like their voicemail that's like, well, we're closed because it's Christmas. And he's like, well, I left him a message for you. And I'm like, damn it. Like I, it says they're open. And so I try to call. I get the same automated message. So then I just call and talk to like lady at the store, right? Like I think the manager is answering the phone at the store. And I'm like, is your pharmacy open? Because the website says it's open, but my vet just called in a prescription and he got an automated thing. And she's like, yeah, they're open. Um, try dialing this number. <laughs> and I was like, okay. So I hang up. I dial that number. Same automated message. So I call the lady back and I was like, so just got the same message. She's like, well, let me just transfer you. So she transfers me and I get a like, dee 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 dee. This number oh is not God. in service. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm just fucking going. Yeah. I'm going to go. And yeah. if I have to go and be like, please listen to your voicemail and whatever. So I show up and I hear her, uh, you know, I walk towards the pharmacy and I hear the lady saying to the pharmacy, like, yeah, somebody just called, you know, about their vet leaving a message. And I was like, it's me. <laughs> That's my vet. And so they had gotten the message. But then they're like, well, this medicine, like he's supposed to get 400 milligrams and it only comes in 100 milligram capsules. I'm like, yeah, he takes four twice a day. And they're like, well, we're going to need to, cl you know, clarify that. So I had to give him like the vet's cell phone number and they called him again on Christmas to confirm. So I had to hang out for like an hour. Seems like they're making it complicated. But we got it filled. Okay. So oh. we got number one filled. But number two, it's a dog medicine, so they don't carry it at walgreens and i was like well like it's sort of one of the least serious of them so maybe it'll just be okay if we stop it so we had enough to give him the medicine on friday and then we ran out the 26th that was or the 25th the 25th so yeah. he didn't get any on saturday and he was fine and he didn't get any on sunday and he was fine and then monday afternoon while little cheese is having his surgery he has a voodoo has a seizure um and when he has a seizure i know i've said it before but i really need to emphasize again that he screams like you have cut his abdomen open and are squeezing things it sounds like a human it's the worst sound it's terrible it's it sounds terrible. like a human in a lot of distress and so he had and there's guy, the guys are still here working on the windows and i know the guy was here and then he was gone, and we're like, did he, it was like three in the afternoon, I'm like, did he leave? Like, that's fine, but usually they're here longer than that. And then he comes back like half an hour later with coffee. So I'm wondering if he like heard the screaming, and then is like, you know what, I'm just gonna step out for a little bit. And then come let back. them deal with it. 
So the next day I was like, look, uh, just so you know, my dog has seizures and he makes these really loud noises. So if you hear something, that's what it is. And the guy's like, okay. Yeah, whatever. He's hmm. Eastern European, so he may not, you know, he may not, he may hear that all the time. <laughs> That's a terrible stereotype. You're not allowed to say stuff like that. What? Bad stuff happened in Eastern Europe. Anyway, uh, so fine. He has that seizure at like three in the afternoon. Now, we know from his records and from the one other seizure that he's had with us that time he vomited up his seizure medicines and guac ate the vomit and the seizure medicine. <laughs> he tends to have uh, kind of a series of them. He had two about 12 hours apart last time he had them with us, and, and that's noted in his records. So when we were going to bed, I'm like, look, voodoo, no seizures in the middle of the night, please. And uh, Did he listen? He did not listen. He is a miscreant. So 3 a.m., we are awoken to death wails screaming. Yeah. No, I was up. I'd taken someone out. And then I was like on the other side of the house. And then... No, you were in bed. Was I? Oh, yeah, because we both... You... What was that? What, what, what time am I thinking about? <laughs> You star- You were in bed because you started like yelling. I mean, we were both dead asleep, right? So you started yelling at somebody to stop. And I was like, no, 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 he's having a seizure. So GR dad like gets all the other dogs out of the room because they all stick their face in his face while he's like convulsing on the floor. And so he has his seizure. And then he's kind of laying there and he has not come around, right? So he has the screaming, like super convulsing part and then just kind of lays there and pants. He's you know, his brain's not working yet. It's like a neutral, yeah. And before he could even, you know, get out of it and sort of start coming back, he had another one. A worse one, it sounded like. And then another one and another one. He had four, so it's called a cluster seizure. <sighs> cluster, cluster seizure. So all of his muscles tense up. And so when he had the seizure in the afternoon, he pooped a tiny bit. Like, you, they'll often pee themselves a little bit. Easy cleanup. And he pooped a little bit at the beginning in in the first seizure that he had. But that was too easy. And then he just lost control of his poop facilities poor in the boy. second seizure. Poor Jen, poor boy. While I was holding I know I guess I wasn't fully holding him for that one. So that just kind of went on the carpet and I cleaned that I put it all in a towel and that towel has been thrown away. We've talked about how you don't want to be a rug in our house. We you really don't want to be a rug in our house. <laughs> and then the third seizure, he pooped all over me. And also the fourth seizure. Dear Dad kind of wiped me off. But he also had poop all over himself. And then, so he find I was like, maybe he's going to die. Because he's just having these seizures. And he like doesn't breathe when he's having the seizures. And then he's like panting. So finally, after the fourth one, they stopped. And so I brought him into the bathroom and kind of locked the door. And I was like, okay, me and Vood's hanging out in here until it's better. We both need a shower. Yeah. <laughs> and he needs to recover. And... For his other seizures, which are just like one and then they were finished, he tends to kind of be a little out of it for a bit, but is generally fine. For this one, he was like walking laps around the bathroom and then he'd like run into the door and then he would get stuck because he'd try to just keep going. It's like a video game character glitching. He like keeps taking that step and bonking into the wall, but like not reacting to the fact that he's bonking into the wall. Yeah. Yeah. So he did that for probably 15 minutes and then, you know, he slowly started coming back and I'd, every time he'd walk past me, I'm just sitting on like the toilet lid. I'd try to stop him and he'd just keep walking. And so I'd let him. And eventually when he came past one time, like he stopped for a minute and he kind of looked at me and he didn't really know what was going on, but he licked my nose and then kept walking. And I was like, well, that's very nice that like you get that I'm here to help you. So then... We had to get him in the shower and give him a very thorough bath because he had poop all over himself. And then I got to get in the shower because I had poop all over myself. And then anything was that was at butt level had poop on it because he had brushed into it. Dear Dad, meantime, was cleaning the carpets. He did a good job. I think the spot bot did, its, did the most of the work. I got to yeah. give credit to that machine. That's good. It looks... I was worried what was what I was going to see when I came out, but it was all nice and clean after we finished our baths and everything. You gave me lots of time to work. Yeah. It, I mean, so it was about an hour total between like the wake up and the seizures and the cleanup and whatever. And half the struggle is always trying to keep like Venk away because she's super interested in everything that's happening. Yeah. And you just don't want anyone in anyone's face when, when someone's seizuring. Yeah. And so this is just as a reminder 
Parm's night home from surgery, right? He's been home for a few hours He's since his surgery. also banged up, and we should have actually just been worried about him, and that would have been fine. That would have been plenty of worry, actually. Yeah. Uh, so I was, yeah, it was probably 3.45 or 4 o'clock when we finished, and then I was so stressed out, like, trying, I'm like, how the hell are we going to get this medicine? Like, what am I going to do? I was like, I can't. I can't go to sleep. I'm just trying to solve this problem. So I got up and I sent an email to the vet who did palm surgery. Um, like 12 hours before, I mean, 18 yeah. hours before. And I was like, look, cause she has seen voodoo for her seizures. And I was like, so look, you know, this medicine was supposed to come on Christmas Eve. It didn't come. We ran out of it. He hasn't had it. Uh, where can I get it? Like I will drive to Miami today if that's the closest vet that has it. But did you, you, did you start the whole text with you up? question mark <laughs> she told me that she's like she's like i'm a night owl i'm normally up between like two and four you know until like two or four i almost texted her because i have her cell phone number but i was like no oh like, you emailed that's nice i emailed that's nice yeah um because like what's she gonna do like drive to the clinic the clinic doesn't have this medicine the vet was open on saturday yeah, and i called them first. asking yeah. for it and they don't they don't have it in stock otherwise i would have had it um so I knew she could, there's nothing that she could have done. So I emailed her and, uh, and then first thing on Tuesday, Tuesday morning, I called the vet and I was like, look, you know, he's out of this medicine. He had these just terrible seizures. Uh, I know you don't have it. We got to get it. <laughs> I need it from somewhere. So, you know, do you know other clinics down here? Is there a clinic I can go to anywhere in Miami? Like, like yeah. I'll drive to Miami to get this medicine so he doesn't have this again. Um, and so they call, they're like, okay, like, you know, we talked to her, we've got some numbers of some other clinics to call, we're gonna figure this out for you, which is great. And so then they called me back half an hour later and they're like, you know, there's a couple, we called a couple clinics down here, they don't have it, but we went through a bin of medicine that people have donated to us. So like, they're, I think their dogs die and they're on a bunch of medicine. And then people donate the medicine to the vet clinic. So it's really nice. Better than throwing it away. And they're like, we have some. And it expired in February, but it won't hurt him to take it if it's expired. And it'll probably still work because it's not that expired. And I was like, give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'm, I'll be there in 45 minutes. Yeah, I mean, that's what I said. I'm like, yeah. I'm on my way. <laughs> 45 minutes. And they're like, uh, bring Parm with you because if you're coming up here, she wants to take a look at him again anyway. So that was nice. Yeah. I thought... Um, so Parm got rechecked. They're, they worry about like, because there's so much blood that they lose with those tumors that they'll have heart arrhythmias, that their blood counts will be low, whatever. He did really good. And they, so they rechecked him for everything and it looked great. And the spleen makes blood too. So the whole yeah. thing. Yeah. And so all of a sudden it's gone. They had a dog that was there to be a blood donor for know, him. They have transfusion dog. Like, I mean, he works, he's the dog of someone who works there, right? Yeah. It, and I, like I saw her. the sweetest her. thing I ever heard. She brought us in and she said, yeah, one of my dogs had surgery yesterday. And I was like, oh, like, is that the blood donor? And she's like, no, that's my other dog. <laughs> so he was just like on standby in case. so sweet. It was very nice. Uh, the Parm was doing great. And it was really nice to be able to get him. Let me just be clear. Rejected. They have like a transfusion dog ready to give transfusions at the vet place. In case yeah. your dog is crashing, they have like universal donor dog. Awesome. On deck. Like that dog is going straight to heaven. Right? I mean, just not even stopping so anywhere. Good. So good. So good. Um, so, yeah. So, Parm got rechecked. We got the medicine for Voodoo and started him on that. And then I was talking with her, and I'm like, it was really scary with him. Because she's had dogs that had seizures. And I was like, but they just kept coming. I was like, I was kind of worried he was going to die. And she's like, well, there's this thing. And she's like, I can f f give it. I can probably find a place where you actually think we have some. Let me give it to you. So it's, she gave me this syringe and it's got, instead of a needle on the end, it's got this little... It's like a pen looking thing. Yeah, yeah. This thing, and basically if they start having these cluster seizures, so if he has one seizure, whatever, you let him have the one seizure. If he has a second, as soon as the second one's done, you stick this thing in their nose and squirt the stuff that's in it into their nose. So it gets, you know, it makes contact with the mucous membranes and it's basically like a brain reset button and it apparently I'm turning will, it off and I'm turning it on again yeah we'll um, ab we'll abort these seizures uh because I've had dogs who had seizures before but not anything like what he had it was no. very scary and violent and dangerous took a lot out of him <laughs> yeah out of all of us I think uh so now we've got that in the bin of voodoo medicine so if he starts doing it next time he has a seizure it's gonna be like dear dad 
get the pen. Get the pen. <laughs> and we'll be like ready Break with the glass pen. Yeah. to get pen. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, so that's that's actually really nice to have. Yeah. Uh, on call. And is she the one who said he should be really hungry afterwards? Uh, no, that's actually uh, a colleague of mine. Her son has seizures, and oh, yeah. she's like, you know, after his maybe after his first seizure, you know, they took him to the hospital. He hadn't really had one before. And she's like, the next day, you know, they brought him this huge breakfast. He had it like in the middle of the night, of course. They brought this huge breakfast. She's like, and I went down to the cafeteria and I got, you know, like protein bar and like a muffin. And I bought him a Rice Krispie treat and I came back up and he was like, mom, what do you got to eat? So I gave him the Rice Krispie treat and he's like, now what do you got? And he ate my muffin and then he ate the protein bar and he's like, now what? He took a bite out of my arm. (laughs) She's like, apparently they just like burned through, the brain burns through like all the glucose it has. And so you're like ravenous, apparently. So he got some extra... I don't know if that was a thing for him, but could be a weight gain issue too. I mean, if he's having seizures and just chomping everything, who knows? I mean, overall, like we've been decreasing his phenylbarbital, which has been going well. So I think this is really just like the sudden drop off of this other medicine. But the vet also was he's on so he's on four different anti seizure medicines, which we think he doesn't need to be on all of those. Um, because it looked from his records, and I think I've said this before, that every time he had a seizure, they would increase a dose or add another thing. Um, so we're trying to get him off some of them. Um, and I think that's going to go fine. But one of the safer ones that he's on, she's like, look, if he has one of those clusters, or frankly, even if he has a seizure, like give him, he's getting twice a day doses. She's like, give him an extra dose. Like, so he gets three a day. Like every eight hours, yeah. Yeah, for... Um, you know, a few days. So she told us to do it for a week this time. And she's like, that's, it's a really safe drug. It's not going to hurt him. You know, he's well within the range where he can get this. And um, that may make it less likely that he's going to have another seizure. So I was like, I I felt so good coming away from that, you know, just stopping to pick medicine up to like, okay, I can give him extra of this one. And I've got this like pen that I can use to stop it. And then obviously had the medicine that we were missing. So good vets are just amazing. Yeah, she knows so much. She's really great. Um, so that's, that's there's Boots. Mean. Yeah, he's now back to his miscreant self. He's yeah. trying to eat napkins or t shirts or something. Or what is it, your skirt? He was he had his head on your lap and it was just chomping on your skirt. It ripped my skirt. I had to throw that skirt away. And he's sneaky and fast, like two bites, and he's like, Nang. Yeah, yeah, Dang. he was like chomping a paper towel, and I was like, Ugh. Fine. And then he chomped the skirt. And rip. <laughs> and I was like, what the heck? And I looked at the skirt and then he chomped the pillowcase on the pillow that I was sitting on and ripped that too. <sighs> he's getting much better though. He is getting much better. He's just, he's just wild still a little bit. Yeah, he's, just, he's learning. I mean, if he were six weeks, this would be totally natural. It's just yeah. that he's three years or whatever he is and it feels weird to see a grown dog act so weird. But like with his... You know, he would go outside and just lay down and refuse to come. He's much better about that now. He is much better. He kind of gets it that, well, we've also, we bribe him sometimes, but he also gets it that the thing to do is to come back to the elevator. Oh, and he, I mean, the fact that he responds to snacks is great. Yeah. You know, and I I was noting this week, like how much better guac is where like he'll run to the water and I'll be like, guac, no. And he kind of looks at me and I was like, come here. And he'll be like, okay. And then he comes over and I can also do the thing I do with hops and vink where it's like. I'm like, guac, come here. And he'll come and then he'll turn around. And I'll be like, ah, ah, ah. And then he goes, all right, fine. And he comes back. <laughs> he responds to like me making the disappointed sounds, which nev- he never would have done that before. No, guac is getting it better and better too. He's a smart dog. That's why he's so dangerous. Yeah, he really is. So, I mean, other than like the main worry with him now is just like, you know, will he decide to run around the fence and go out to the street? Um, but he, his because he he's smart enough to know and remember that he can. Yeah, but his listening is so so much better. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, and I mean, he, and he doesn't have the around. he he doesn't seem to have the desire to like stay outside indefinitely the way he kind of did mm-hmm. six months ago, right? Where yeah. he would he would kind of he was kind of doing a voodoo where he'd lie down outside and be like, I'm gonna stay out here and yeah, screw you guys and escape supervision for a little while. Yeah. No, I mean, it's it's amazing how much better yeah. he is. He's very well behaved now. We'll probably keep him. <laughs> uh, and I, I see Voods on that path. I mean, he's he's crazy. 
and mm-hmm. uh, but he kind of he's learning. He's a good boy, and yeah. he's just you can tell he's just got energy. He's getting more energy. He likes the walks. He's like likes yeah. the enrichment. He just gets kind of bored. Yeah. But he's bonding with us too, or at least with me. I mean, I don't know if you feel it with you, but he definitely is like, He's a good You're boy. My friend, I love you. And I'm yeah. like, I love you too, my big white I man. Give him good pets. Yeah. We have a thing. So, uh, yeah, so he's doing good. Let's see. Other than the two of them, Vink has allergies. Vink has allergies. Um, she's, I mean, do we want to talk about the. No, she's got skin issues. She's had some little infected parts of her skin that have made some grossness which she doesn't care about as much as he we do but i think it's kind of like disturbing that she's got bumps on her skin yeah uh but she's doing fine she's on we started her on a hypoallergenic foods we just finished the transition to that um so hopefully that'll help when she's on that hops is doing great cb is i actually took cb up to the vet because he's annoying and I was like, they're <laughs> yes. like, what's the problem? I'm like, he's annoying. He's discovered his voice, doctor. He's, he, he's discovered his inner, his inner self. Makes all these sounds at us. And, <laughs> and so I was like, I just want to make sure there's like not anything physically wrong and that he's just being annoying. Right. And so they rechecked him for like a UTI. He's fine. Uh, so they're He's like, just annoying. Yeah. <laughs> she's the vet who's on. This is a different one of the vets in the same office. And she's like, you know, maybe... He knows that, you know, there's trouble with the two new dogs that came in. Dear Dad's rolling his eyes. I'm, I am, I'm hurting my head. <laughs> like, oh, it's only because, you know, Parmesan had surgery or something. But, it's not that. Oh, excuse me. I'm tired. Because um, he was making those sounds way before then, too. Well, we looked at, we went back through the record. So he had the UTI. And then right at the point that we finished treating the UTI is when we got Voodoo and then Parmesan. So it could be he was like that with the UTI because he was uncomfortable. And now whatever, he's jealous or sad or I don't know, maybe he senses that there's sickness in the new dogs that makes him nervous. Jealous I get. Yeah. uh, So we've been trying to give him a lot of attention. Sensing sickness. I mean, I don't think he's that affected. I don't mean in a bad way, right? I mean, I think Vank would do that where she's Mm -hmm. anxiously pacing or something, but... I think Chief Brody's in his own little zone, and sometimes he just needs to be pet. We did worry that it's because he was really hungry from the diet, even though his weight had plateaued. So we started giving him extra food, yeah. and then he just gained three pounds back. So, so. yeah. Mm. We have taken the extra food away. We've added in some green beans, which he loves. He loves those green beans. Um, and then, we'll, you know, if he seems really hungry, we'll give him a little extra. But the problem was not hunger. He was still whiny. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. Like, we... Yeah. We gave him more food, and he was still whiny, so it doesn't make a difference to whining, but it made a difference to him gaining weight. Yep. So. Uh, who did we forget? St. Patrick's doing his normal self. Quack's quack. Quack is quack. Cops and finger good. That's everybody. Oh. All right. Finally. I mean, it's been three hours, so, oh. you know, what are you, what are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> um, taste of the Keys the squarest of groupers the school of square groupers yeah. oh my gosh so all right i don't i don't even need to pull the article up on this a bunch of you send it to me um so on christmas day this fisherman was out and he found 74 pounds of cocaine floating in the water where, where? was he 15 miles off sugarloaf key that's our key <laughs> that's our key 74 pounds of cocaine just floating in the water off our key. Yeah, it was a bunch of packets. Yeah, or, or I'm it, looking at a picture. contained a bunch of sub-packets. Like it, was a, it looked like a lot of cocaine. 26 packages, like big-ass packages. If he just cocaine. waited, it would have washed up, and we could have been like, hey, we found some cocaine. <laughs> yeah. Estimated street value of $1.2 million. Yeah. It's just hard to bring that to the ATM and be like, here, I'm depositing some cocaine. Can you give me some money? If you are interested in what happens if that happens, we did an episode of Murders in Paradise on what happened when this fisherman found a square grouper of cocaine and decided to keep it. Bad, bad things. It's on um, Murders in Paradise for a reason. Don't spoil it, but it's bad. (laughs) It it opens with murder. It's Uh, it's really bad. Uh... Yeah, floating packages south of Sugarloaf Key. Yeah, it was a whole thing, like because it, it was an offshore enough. It was federal water, so the 
State Fish border and Wildlife Patrol. got the Border Patrol involved, yeah. and it's like fe- now it's federal drugs, and yeah. Yeah. 74 pounds of cocaine. Floating around there. Our Just key. Wait for some whale to snort it or something. I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Well, there you go. That's, that was the Christmas miracle. I guess nobody got anything. You, you better believe that when we go for walks near the water, we're looking for packages. All the time. <laughs> oh, uh, my goodness. My fantasy is to find one full of cash. It would be cash. A brick of cash. A brick of cash. Like a... Oh my- Square yard brick of cash. Oh my god! I'd take a little one. Sure, yeah. Just you. I mean, you've said you'd take five dollars. We still haven't even found. I'd be $5. happy to find a fiver. That'd be great. You found you find coins on your run. You're excited. Yep. Bills would be better. Bills would be better. Bricks of bills would be the best. That would be great. Uh, so that's the taste of the keys for this week. All yeah. that cocaine floating in the water off our key. Yeah. Uh, you have a German word of the week. It's a German phrase, and I may have talked about this before but i'm not going to consult the wiki thanks to whoever is maintaining the wiki by the way you guys do great work it's a good service i mean I, i'm probably more than one person because it's a wiki but yeah. you do great work those entries are quality well researched and well written indeed we're we are very appreciative of it we don't mention it enough probably anyway mm-hmm. so if i've repeated if i've said this before sorry it's been many years there's a german phrase called zwischen den jahren which describes the days after Christmas, and there's always two days of Christmas in Germany, and before New Year's. This is between the years. It just means between the years, but it kind of implies this kind of out of timeness, like it's not yeah. even part of the regular year. It's just in between time, <laughs> and you and people, you know, probably used to be more. I mean, if you had a job in a factory, all the factories closed in Germany for the two weeks, so yeah. you, you you kind of could take stock, and it was a kind of a nice breather where everyone was off it's probably less so now but it still is i it, i like this zwischen den jahren idea that it's just like a kind of free time like bonus time yeah well today's december 30th so tomorrow is new year's eve yeah what are your plans we have different plans this year well, we had different plans last year you know i'm gonna take care of the dogs last year your dad was in germany and i was here with the dog solo yeah this year your dad is staying here with the dogs yeah it seems like a fair play yeah, and I am going to run an ultra. Uh, so there's a ultra marathon. Like yeah, up. not not like near, not around New Year's Eve, at it. Yeah, so it's uh, it's up just not all the way to Palm Beach. So it's about a three and a half four hour drive from here, um, and it's a a timed race, which is a thing we do in ultras. Uh, I mean, how not far can you race. run in a certain time? In a certain amount the, of time. The, diabolical part of it yeah yeah so there's a six hour a 12 hour and a 24 hour race um i'm just glad you have not picked a 24 i picked a 12 um and then you can pick which there's like different starting times for the 12 uh so you can do like 9 a.m to 9 p.m tomorrow i'm doing this 6 p.m on new year's eve to 6 a.m on new year's day to 12 hours 2020 to 21 run yep so i'm going to be running overnight apparently there's a champagne toast that's cool. um yeah at midnight you're the these sorts of races tend to be like sort of laid back like the timed races you know of course there's people who take them seriously but it's like you were it's a loop right you just run the same loop over and over and over again and they tend to this be short, short loop this this loop is 0.66 miles it's just about a kilometer yeah um which and, is kind of good i guess because then you can get in as many as possible, right? If it's a ten mile loop, yeah. and there's an hour left in your twelve hours, you can't go do another one. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you, for the they tend to be about a mile. For your hundred miles, so. they were like three mile loops. Two right? and a half. Two and a half yeah. mile loops. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I will probably run like forty five miles. I guess forty forty five miles in the twelve hours. If I Holy take it smokes! I could do fifty if I pushed it, but I have no intentions of pushing. It's gonna it. take you two years. I'm going to have a good time. Two years. I, I didn't know about this race. I think they actually just got their permits approved. They, they've they got a really... I was supposed to do an ultra at like the second week of December, which I've done before. And I just wasn't super cool with their COVID protocols. Like it wasn't bad, but I wasn't like convinced of how great it was going to be. And I was going to have to stay in a hotel. Um Lord is so shaky on that stuff anyway. For sure. This one, it starts 6 p.m., so I'm like leaving at noon tomorrow or noon 30, and then I go run all night. And if I usually, like, once you finish that, 
I think anytime you pull an all nighter, you kind of awake in the morning, even though you've done it. Um, but it's at a park and, and the race goes on all through the next day. So I can sleep in my car for a few hours if I need to. Um, it's not going to be that hot, but, um, we'll see. There's plenty of opportunities to stop at rest stops or stop in the keys if I have to, but I don't have to stay overnight anywhere. And their COVID protocols are really excellent. So, um, like you have to wear a mask if you're, you know, when you're in the kind of start finish area, Mm. you can't be within six feet of any runners on the course, like no high fives allowed. Um, all the stuff at the aid station where normally they have like little cups full of stuff, it's all single serve. So you just take and go, um, and you go past your car all the time. So they're really encouraging people to kind of bring their own stuff. Self crew. Yeah. So it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a nice, you know, pretty safe way to do it. There's not that many people running it because I just think it just got approved. So it's also crazy time. Well, I think Monday I was like, you know, they put, there's a Florida ultra runners Facebook group that I'm on and, and someone was like, Hey, you can still, you know, I'm the director of this race. It's open. And I was like, huh, should I do that? Should I not do it? I don't know. I don't want to oh, drive. You saw the medal. The medal is really good. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There's a, I've po- if you follow Jen runs with dogs, I've posted some virtual races over the summer. Um, like Hubert is this like weird running octopus-y. eyeball eyeball with octopus arm character and there have been these like month-long challenges of like how far can you run or you know can you do a five you know how many different distances can you do or whatever with these super cool medals that um this woman brie she has a company called wicked skins and she makes medals um if you follow me i've talked a lot about the cheesy plastic award i was getting for that race series i did she made all of those so she actually got COVID at the beginning of December Whoa. and just um, had to stop making stuff. She's in Florida? She's in Florida. Oh. Yeah, she makes it mostly for Florida raises. And so uh, so we, we actually don't get the medals at the event. They're going to, both for COVID reasons, so, you know, less contact with the staff. But all the T-shirts and medals and everything just get mailed to us uh, after the race. But it's going to be a cool medal. Yeah. Um, so, but it was mostly, you know, mostly I was like, it's sort of a pain in the ass to like drive four hours and do this thing and drive back. Would I do it if it were in marathon, which is like 45 minutes away, hundred percent would do it. Right. And, you know, so this is, doesn't have any of the COVID dangers of like some of the other traveling and it's, it's going to be one of what I, what I really like with races is that I can go like this was a super cool thing that I got to do for whatever reason. Yeah. You know, next year, will I be, will I be like remembering I did that race for the 50 K that I skipped a couple of weeks ago? No. I mean, it was like a fun race when I did it last year, but I'm not going to be like, Oh, the 2020 Skeeter scoot. Like it's amazing. But running into 2021 is cool. I did a 12 hour ultra, like from new year's Eve to new year's day with like a toast in the middle. That's pretty cool. Very cool. So that's sort of the thing that won me over. And Jared, dad, I appreciate you being so supportive because I'm on these groups with people who have spouses, especially, frankly, women who have husbands who are not supportive of their running and give mm. them a really hard time about, you know, not spending enough time with the family or picking the running that's, over me. That's bad. The, it's probably bullshit. And I suspect those husbands like spend a lot of time at work or golfing and have their own thing that they do that isn't bitched about the same way. You know what I mean? It's not, it doesn't go both ways. Don't like their wives doing epic shit. <sighs> No, I think they don't like their wives being around, not being around, serving them hand and foot. That's the freaking thing. I don't think they care what their wife does or doesn't do. This is, I have some, someone in some like stereotype in mind, I guess, but it's mostly that the wife isn't there to like tend to them. That's in any what I case, think. I appreciate you being, of course, like always consistently supportive of all my yeah. crazy running crap. Yeah, I threatened to drive the RV up, but then if I drive the RV up with seven dogs in it, it doesn't really free me up to crew you at all. I'd be <laughs> constantly chasing one of them down or like lifting one of them around. Yeah. It, we're not going to be taking any RV trips with the current squad. Oof. They're too, but between Patrick and Parmesan, like it's too fragile. We won't even, I, I it, don't think it makes sense to even take them up. It was early. maxing out before Parmesan. We, you add Parmesan in the mix and it kind of gets too like painful to think about for those two old, old guys. Yeah. And I mean, Voodoo's a little, he'll add a real note of chaos to the mix too. And so. he's giant. 
And he's really big. I mean, they'll fit. And if they all just hung out and rested, it would be fine. Yeah, but I didn't insist on like all of them pacing and ju- and Guac loves to get Jesus the heaviest God. Kong he can and then hang it off the edge of the bed and then drop it onto Patrick. Yeah. If we're lucky for Patrick laying down, sometimes most of the time Patrick just paces. He, d- he just thinks it's fun chaos and see how the conch bounces off. It's mostly Patrick, but it would be any dog that's down there. But if it's Patrick, it's doubly bad. Yeah, I mean, I think the only thing that will get us road tripping up to Maryland is if we get access to the COVID vaccine up there before we would get it down here. Yeah. No. Um, and then even then we might do it in a different way. No. Uh, I think it'd be, it's just too much. It, too much and too fragile. You're famous. Why don't you get your freaking COVID? You're blue check person. <laughs> Twitter verified that accounts. That should be <laughs> get COVID some vaccine kind version. of criteria. Number of Instagram <laughs> profiles gets you oh uh, gets you a vaccine. You'd be <laughs> top front of the line. Oh, congratulations on the Room Raider rating, by the way. Thank you. Yes. Uh, so, if I mean, you guys have probably seen, unless you're not a Twitter follower, that we've been rated by Room Raider a bunch of times. And uh, they did their end of the year awards, and we won best supporting dogs from Room Raider. We're very honored. Yeah, we're. I'm very proud. I think that's great. That's great. I like those guys. If they like our dogs, that's even better. They've done really good stuff. I mean, they all the like. There's a. They have a political action committee, which is not what they're using Room Raider for. They have used like all the fundraising that they've done from that, which is basically through selling stuff, um, to deliver masks to. Uh, you know, basically Indian reservations like Native American uh, tribes that don't have any stuff. In Canada too? Or, or I think one of them's Canadian, right? Yeah, one of them's Canadian, but I, it's all been American. Oh, okay. Like a, they did a lot of stuff with the Navajo Nation. Um, and then there's a few other, a few other tribes came to them as like, we don't have enough stuff. And so they raised, I mean, tens of thousands of dollars from selling their stuff. And That's great. Um, they've done... You know, it's like political. People have like their different views, and you know, I think the it's a couple that does it. And the guy I think was in the Clinton White House, and I don't know that somebody tried to do a a kind of like expose because uh, he had tweeted something. Remember that Democratic staffer who got shot in D.C.? Yes, the conspiracy. And there was a whole was conspiracy. Like, so I, Clinton killed him or something, right? Something yeah. like that. It was like at the beginning of the Trump administration. So I think the guy of room raider was trying to have an account uh where he was doing kind of like unofficial news like oh i'm not a journalist but i got the insider scoop and had tweeted something like right at the time that said oh you know sources are saying like this was actually related to something else it would tweet which he later deleted and i can see if you're trying to be like i got the inside scoop like somebody said this to me before before it is known that there's a conspiracy going on and you tweet that you conspiracy know, some, theory, right? A Not conspiracy. A conspiracy. No, yeah. I'm sorry. Yes, that there's a conspiracy theory, right? You hear this thing, and you're trying to like break the news as fast as possible, and then it turns out, oh, like that's just like a bunch of conspiracy theory bullshit, and you delete the tweet. I mean. I get it's not responsible journalism. He wasn't trying to be a journalist, so there was this like attempted at a hit piece thing that came out, and it's like, I'm not going to them for like news or frankly or politics like they have brought a real bright spot into 2020 yeah, commenting it's just kind on of a quirky little thing coming on people's cord violations and <laughs> saying there's not enough you know flowers in the picture or whatever random stuff oh sideways books are bad they're like stacking bo- you know there's something yeah don't right. don't sort your books by color i mean it's like yeah, it's fine it's funny yeah it's funny and they've done really great stuff. I mean, they've they've made a big difference for the Native American tribes that they have worked with, and oh. so. And they like our dogs, so hey, yay! They love her. They follow us. They follow the dogs, so. Whoa. We're big fans. Um, yeah, we're big fans of all our followers, including Room Raiders. Yeah, that yeah, that's right. Huh. Uh, so thanks, and I appreciate the win from that's them, nice. and I, I know appreciate you, you know, congrats from you. You like getting gold stars I for do. stuff. I do. <laughs> I'm going to put it on my CV. <laughs> I think it's a funny thing that during COVID, I was rated 10 out of 10 by Room Raider. That'll be a thing on people's resumes. Yeah. Um, all right. I think that's everything. Anything else you want to add? No. Uh, Happy New Year to everyone, I guess. Happy this is, uh, New It's year. been a long year. It's been a long five, seven years. It's been in dog years. It's been seven years. Imagine how Feels bad like our dogs feel 
we feel bad, but they've had seven years of this crap. Hey, Although, they can't get COVID, so. Yeah. And they've been well tended this year. Holy yes, they smokes. Have. So yes, they have. good for them. But anyway, 2021 should be better. Whoop, whoop. Should be better. All right. Well, until next year, don't bite anyone unless they ask you to. That's right. Bye. Bye. Bye.